Hi, it's Anna Runkle here, also known as the Crappy Childhood Fairy. And today I wanna to share with you a video about one of the worst triggers of childhood PTSD symptoms for many of us. And it's the feeling of abandonment. Now this is one of the videos from my Dysregulation Boot Camp, which is a 20 day course that helps you calm your PTSD triggers and kind of get better mastery over your emotions and thinking. And if you're interested in that, I did put a link to it below. But you'll hear me in this video refer to a worksheet. So I just wanted to give you that heads up. There's no worksheet here on the YouTube version. It's in the course. I tell a story in this video of how triggers can get that power over us. And I thought you might find it really helpful for your healing. Today, we're gonna to talk about one of the most intense triggers for childhood PTSD, abandonment. This one is so primal because we're all wired to be loved and included in the tribe as if our lives depend on it. Because in any situation before the last, I don't know, 100 years or so, our lives did depend on it. We need our parents when we're born and we need dependable people connected to us throughout our lives. So just about everyone, and I, I know this because I've taught so many people to write their fears each day and I've heard the things that come up for everyone, being left by the tribe is a core fear. It comes out as fear of ending up alone and homeless and dying alone. And the fear isn't irrational, really. It's a standard feature of being a homo sapien. But for those of us with childhood PTSD, it can go way out of proportion to the situation, to the point of being crippling. And it can make us seem really unreasonable. In my childhood, my mother would leave the family for a month at a time, starting when I was a month old. She'd run off with some guy and not tell anyone where she was or if she was coming back. Now she did come back, but the family would be in anguish and frantic with uncertainty. Uh, and this was going on all around me while I was a small kid. And then when I was about five, she'd sometimes take me with her and leave me for a moment in a lobby or for a couple of hours in a movie theater. And then she would not come back for 10, 11 hours. And the police picked me up once outside a casino. That's when I was six. I hadn't eaten all day. I had a fever. Now nowadays you'd lose your kids over something like that, but not back then. And I mean, I was scrambling to cover for her because of course I didn't want them to take me away from her. But you can see where I got kind of a weird thing around abandonment. And that carried into my adulthood. And it certainly kicked up when I started having groups of friends, then boyfriends, and then working and trying to fit in. All situations where sometimes there's rejection. And before I learned to stay regulated, any rejection, I'll tell you what it felt like. It was as if I'd been injected with a toxic chemical. I'm assuming it was a release of some stress hormone. And I could feel that bad feeling just like flowing through my bloodstream. And I would think, oh no, here it goes again. And I'd fall into a very dark kind of dysregulation and there would be nothing I could do to stop it. That's a trigger. So you'll be tempted on the worksheet to put a lot of work into understanding why you have certain triggers like this one, just like I told you why. And knowing this, that's possibly helpful. Maybe you'll better understand that your reactions to abandonment are not your fault. You didn't just make it up. But I'm gonna direct the majority of your focus to just remembering and noticing what it feels like when you're triggered by abandonment. What in your adult life recently has set it off? And what was it about those situations that, that seems to get to you so badly? So that's all in the worksheet, along with reflection on how you've come back from abandonment. Totally important, right? One thing that's gonna help you tremendously with dislodging those deep-rooted triggers that have an early and understandable origin is the daily practice. When you write your fears and resentments, you can pour out whatever is coming up on a hard day when your fear of abandonment got triggered. Fear, no one likes me. Fear, I don't know what just happened. Fear, I'll end up alone when I'm old. And um, I'm resentful at my girlfriend because I have fear she didn't text me back last night, and so on. Deep triggers aren't going to change because you merely decide to change. It's not likely anyway. They change when you can access that pre-language part of your brain where the abandonment hurt was installed. And language out through writing, not speaking, writing what that feeling is that's happening, the terror, the self-hatred, whatever it is for you. You write it, 
you meditate, and you'll find that the emotions are calmer and they're lying low for the time being. And your thinking is clearer. Like maybe you don't have to freak out and act jealous this time. Maybe you can forget about it. Or maybe you're sick of all the fear involved in a relationship and you want to end it. There's no right answer here. The point is that all options are open to you and you're no longer enslaved by a fear of that physiological hell associated with abandonment that limits so many of us with childhood PTSD. 